This is San Luis Pass 2018. This is San Luis Pass 2019, present day. It's even more dangerous than ever. Let me tell you why. Let's do it. Earlier this year, I made a video warning everyone about the dangers that await at the pass. The day my homie Jason filmed this footage, it was a very calm day, nice clean blue water. This footage is present day, and the current and the dangers are even more obvious, and even more dangerous of course. I want to talk about a couple things in this video. One, the structural change. Two, the main channel. Three, deadly wave formations. I mean, getting to the pass itself is quite the adventure, so let's go right along with me and let me show you. All right, what's going on everybody? Here we are at San Luis Pass. It's been such a long time since I've been here, and a lot of stuff has changed, but the sand looks a little flat and packed, mainly because it probably rained like last week and it hasn't been too uh, dry out here, so we're gonna try to make it across here to the pass in a four-cylinder SUV. I don't have 4x4, so if we get stuck, uh, well, I got a homeboy out there, so I might be a little screwed, so. Let's give it a shot. Now, I would like to say, if you're gonna come out to the pass, be careful, learn how to read the sand. If you see dark sand, that sand is probably nice and packed. If you see white sand, do not drive over the white sand because that is the sand that's gonna get you stuck, all right? So let's give it a shot. Hopefully we can make it through, all right? Let's do it. All right, so we are almost to the pass and it looks like it's gonna start getting a little sketchy over here. Oh no, it's not actually. That's good. We're gonna check out this side right here. Because right there it looks a little looks a little dry and that's not what we want to drive through. We want to drive through the, the wet parts. Ah look at that, perfect. And we are at the pass. I made it with no issues. <laughs> well I might be talking a little too soon because we're not entirely there yet. But here we are. Look at that. Beautiful. You know that's what you have to do, you just gotta be real careful, pay attention. And uh, damn, there are some giant breaking waves out there. This pass has changed so much. Oh man, there's a... <laughs> All right, man, this is crazy. Look at that, this is insane. The pass has changed so much. Let's talk about the structural change. Last year, a sandbar started to form towards the middle of the pass. This year, the actual sandbar has formed right along the channel, which seems to be a lot easier to cast into the channel now. But that, that's also a pretty bad uh, thing. This sandbar runs along the ocean side of the pass into the bay. This is even more dangerous than ever before, to be honest with you. In the previous years, you could wade a couple yards into the pass before a drop off, but now the drop off is very imminent. Closer to the bay, a small body of water has formed, which looks pretty docile, but it's not. As you can tell, it also has a drop off with strong tidal flow, especially when the tide is moving. But see, uh, you see these waves here? That's tidal flow. Here's an aerial view of the bay side. You can see a point here that separates the channel and the new small body of water. Both with breaking waves on each side, moving forward. Alright, so the main channel is definitely much more accessible than it was in the past. You see, back in the day, one used to have to cast well over 70 yards to get into the pass, but now, you can probably reach it within 40 yards from the shore, give or take, something like that. The current that goes through here is so strong and it has definitely carved out the channel even more. It's probably deeper than it was in the past, for sure. You see here, this is the deepest area of the pass, and from my last video, many people that were in a life or death situation here commented. One of the most common descriptions that was given of the pass was the feeling of sand rushing out from under them. They were standing in an area and they would lose sand right below them, they would lose footing and would get sucked into the pass. Many of the people that commented were also in just around waist deep water, but let me tell you this to put it in perspective. A foot of water will cost a car to float. A car weighs around at least one ton, which equals 2,000 pounds. The average human being weighs around 137 pounds, but the average weight of a man is 197 pounds. Now, just two feet of rushing water will carry away most cars. And remember, you weigh around a tenth of a ton. Just think about that for a second. Half the spool. Elite AF. All right, one thing that I want to let you know is that there is so much current at the pass that I cast in my loop my uh, bait adjacent to the bridge, running par I mean running parallel to the bridge. Look at that. You see that? 
That's how much current is out here. That is crazy. It's for tough fishing out here, so hope. But I'm just letting you know, man, that is the current. That's an eight ounce weight with a big shad that I cast it out that way. Now it's going out that way. So the homeboy Jason just uh, flew out of bait, but the current is so strong. So we dropped it parallel to the bridge and the current within like a minute just started taking it into the bay. That is crazy. That's how much current's out here. As I flew the drone over the pass towards the Treasure Island side, I noticed something remarkable. Square waves. Square waves are rare throughout the world, but not at the pass under the right conditions. Unfortunately, those conditions are almost always perfect here. Square waves are among the most dangerous ocean phenomena. Square waves are waves that form a grid-like pattern over the ocean with powerful currents. Now, square waves are formed when two different waves meet at a 45 degree angle that are formed from two different currents. That's some crazy stuff, huh? So the pass not only has one strong current, but two sets of strong currents that clash into each other. You know, I've, I've always been intrigued with the side of the pass. I just always, it always looks so turbulent and different. It always looked like the water was boiling. Luckily, I don't see many people fish here because, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. You know, I wouldn't want to fish there. It just looks crazy. It looks real scary when, just staring at it. I've seen crazy waves peak up to five or so feet and I guess it's because waves crash into each other and I never really noticed until I got this aerial view from the past. This is very dangerous. Now, to top it off, <laughs> it gets even more dangerous. So you have square waves, you got two different currents clashing with each other, you got a deep gut running through the middle, ever-changing topography, it, but <laughs> we're not done yet, it gets even crazier. So. After the square waves, as you get closer into the pass, the waves stop. And you know what that means? That means there's a deep drop off right there. That is a deadly combination. And really, I don't think anybody talks about that. At least I haven't heard. You know, and there's just so many elements in this pass that make it such a deadly spot. You know, and now that we've done a thorough analysis from the Galveston Beach side, the Bay side, and now the Surf side, or Treasure Island, you know, it's it's just makes it even more apparent that this place is just extremely dangerous and there is absolutely no need for anybody to get into the water, I mean, at all. You know, I, I guess you can see that I got my toes a little wet, but I mean, that's as much as, as, much as I get into the water, honestly. And um, I fish here many times, but I'm not foolish enough to get anything above my feet, to be honest. The only thing that we're missing to get a really good analysis of the pass are depths. Now, if you know somebody with a boat that has access to a depth finder, I would really love the depths of the pass. You know, and I've, I've analyzed the currents, the waves, the winds, what winds mile per hour affect the, the pass, how, what waves they form, and the only thing that I'm missing are the depths. If I can get a hold of those depths, I can do an even more thorough analysis to finally figure out why the pass is so dangerous, where to fish, and maybe make a different video. This is the second video that I make in regards to the pass, but I think they're very important videos, you know, to warn people of the dangers here. Since I released my previous video, I think uh, four people have passed away, and that was February of this year. Now, as I sit here editing this video, I'm looking through the footage, and I see something even more dangerous. Now I'm looking at the Galveston beach side of the pass, right after the sandbar. You see this is starting to look like a normal beach, it's like a wade gut, but right there, there are two waves crashing into each other. That's a riptide. You can see that the Y-Fin was being sucked back into the pass. That is extremely dangerous. And that's exactly how you get sucked into the pass, pulled down under in the gut. You know, I, I look at this footage and I'm just, it never ceases to amaze me how many dangerous elements are here at the pass. Now on a positive spin, if you're fishing the bank here, if you cast your lure or bait in there, that's a prime area to cast into. This changes, all right? This always changes, okay? Just letting you know. So don't, if you're gonna go to the pass and like, oh, Beach Bomber said there's a uh, gut right there that's probably not gonna be there anymore. But see, this also explains why people feel like when they were in the pass, they feel that the sand was being sucked from under their feet and they lost their footing because they were standing over a riptide. And the riptides here tend to be much more dangerous than the ones on the beachfront because here they lead straight into a deep gut versus the 
beaches don't have such a deep cut running through them. As you can see, the structure has drastically changed in the past year. There are apparent dangerous square waves, multiple currents, deep drop-offs, and deadly riptides. All these are simultaneously synchronized, which create the most dangerous fishing spot in Texas. Just don't get in the water, don't swim. I wouldn't get in the water or swim within a one mile radius of a San Luis Pass, please. Like, subscribe, and share this video to raise awareness of the dangers of this place. But before we end this video, I'd like to thank Jason for the drone footage. Without him, this wouldn't have been possible. One more warning, do not get in the water, do not swim here. I'd also like to mention, the store is restocked with all stickers again. We have also added the most popular designs back in the store and have also assembled sticker packs. Help the channel grow to help me make more elite videos. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> you think we can catch it, dude? You ever trying to light it again real quick? Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Just went under the rock. <laughs> Dude, I probably could have grabbed it with my hands. Yeah. It says for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the new